cold this morning. You can hear some of the birds singing, flying around. Uh, hear the kids going to school. Uh, we had a great program uh, on Instagram last night in our apologetics series, Seidel, uh, from uh, Spurgeon's talked about the uniqueness of Christ and also delved into why we can trust the scriptures as well, why they're reliable, why we can trust them. We often think uh, all you need to do is to read the Bible, but it's not quite enough just to read it. We need to understand it truly. And I was reading my devotions today from 2 Peter 3 verse 16, where Peter refers to Paul's writings and says, his letters, and says, uh, his letters contain some things that are hard to understand, uh, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures, to their own destruction. Peter's doing an interesting thing there. He refers to Paul's letters, which are still being written, as Peter writes, as scripture. So even while people were writing the books of the New Testament, they were still already regarded as scripture as equal in authority to the Old Testament, the, the Jewish Testament, the Jewish scriptures. This is quite a phenomenal thing because some people say oh, the, the, the Bible, the books, the New Testament were only re, re, regarded as scripture later on, maybe hundreds of years later. But no, even as they were being written, they were being regarded as having authority from God. But it isn't just enough just to say that because Peter himself says that some of Paul's letters were hard to understand. Peter was a fisherman, Paul was a kind of university educated rabbi, and so there's a difference in their educational le le levels, and Peter perhaps felt a little bit inferior, uh, he had to be challenged by Paul, if you remember in Galatians at one point, so maybe he felt a little bit in the shadow of Paul, even though he'd known Jesus and Paul hadn't. Um, but Paul, obviously, if you try and read some of the letters, maybe Romans, it is hard to understand sometimes to follow what Paul's saying for some deep systematic theology in there. And uh, Peter says it's hard to understand. And he says some ignorant and unstable people have distorted the scriptures, letters of Paul and other scriptures, to their own destruction. And so we find the importance here of really understanding the Bible, understanding true teaching. I encourage you not just to read the Bible devotionally. We often read it devotionally, just thinking, what is God saying to me today? What's God highlighting to me today? What will get me through the day, uh, help me to stay sane uh, at a very basic sort of level? And the Bible does speak to us at that level in that way. It's a very living, active book. But also there's some deep things which are hard to understand, and it demands work. So I encourage you to take the time to study. There's a lot of resources on the net, uh, which you can look at. Uh, Bible Hub um, uh, is one, um, which has got background material. Uh, Bible Gateway, which I use quite a lot. It's got a lot of devotional materials and commentaries and things like that in the site as well. A book like uh, Gordon Fee's book, Read the Bible, How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth, or Bruce Milne's book on doctrine, Know the Truth. These are helpful books to get and to read and to use, not, not to read uh, from cover to cover like you would a novel, but to use as reference books, to use as books that you can refer to from time to time. So we need to read the Bible, but also understand the Bible and not distort it and not, not, not be victims to other people's distortions of the scripture. One of my sermons as we read up to scripture, I'm going to be looking at some of the false teaching of some of the sects uh, that are around at the moment about the nature of Jesus as we look forward to Christmas and the birth of Christ, the incarnation of God in, in this man, uh, that we need to understand some of the false teaching uh, and how it's distorted the scriptures. So I'd encourage you to study, encourage you to be alive to the difficult things, the hard things, the hard things to understand, even the hard things to receive, because some things you think, oh, I don't like that. Uh, but God's revealing it to us in the word, word, and therefore there must be a reason why we need to know it. So today, I just ask you just to, to think about that and to ponder that and to work out what you're going to do in the coming weeks and months and years to deepen your knowledge and understanding and not just remain at the baby stage of Christianity. In Hebrews it says that uh, uh, we have to go beyond the milk stage, you know, baby food stage, onto the solid food. 
And uh, if any of you brought up kids, you know that there's this kind of mush which they eat with their young, when they're young. And then gradually you introduce uh, more uh, tough food, adult food, gradually into their diet. And there might be a bit of resistance to it uh, from these young children that we're bringing up. And yet it's essential. And it's essential as believers as well. You know, sometimes we remain at the Sunday school level of our faith, the same kind of level that we had when we were children. And there's nothing wrong with a childlike faith, but a childish faith is not very helpful to us as adults. We need the faith of children to trust in our Heavenly Father, but we need the faith of adults. Uh, Jesus says we need to be wise as serpents and gentle as doves, but wise as serpents. We need wisdom and we need to learn how to deepen our faith and deepen our intellectual knowledge of Scripture and of the faith. So I encourage you, just ponder what you're going to do to develop and to deepen your understanding of Scripture so you will not be taken captive, so you'll not be um, led astray by false teachers and, and people that presume to teach the Bible. And if you have any responsibility for teaching the Bible yourself, you certainly need to be learning and developing and deepening your knowledge of the Scriptures. So, Father God, thank you for the gift of the, of the Scriptures. Thank you for the truth they contain. Thank you for their infallibility and their utter reliability in all matters. And we pray, Lord God, for the inspiration of your Spirit to enliven our minds, to understand and to grow in our knowledge of the Word. Amen. Amen. So just to remind you that we are um, returning to our church building this week. And um, Thursday for our midweek service, Breathe, we are going to be in the building, 7 o'clock on Thursday, for the first, build, first service back in the building, the last Breathe of 2020. And then on Sunday the 6th, uh, we'll be back in the building for our normal services, 11 o'clock in the morning, 1.30 for our French language service. Hopefully we'll be able to decorate the church before then so it'll look festive and seasonal. I think that's kind of about it. Except for the 21st of December, Monday the 21st, we're having a special worship concert uh, for anybody to come to really, just to worship God and praise Him. One of the best things we can do in the middle of this coronavirus is to praise God, to worship Him and to center our, our affection and our attention on Him. So join us. Uh, we'll share it live as well. Uh, on Monday the 21st in the evening for a special worship concert uh, that we'll be able to do in the building. So God bless you. God be with you. Remember, he is with you. Amen.